I'm Ryan O'Dowd, and you're listening to Ryan's Audiobooks on the Issues Magazine YouTube channel. Today we're picking up with 1012, Adam from the Son of Knowledge, by Lex Hickson Nur al-Jarahi. We're picking up in the middle of Chapter 5, Islamic Meditations. Mothers. Mother of the living, the beloved Eve, may the peace of Allah always be upon her, received on her gentle brow the shining light of prophecy. After the passing away of the first holy prophet on earth, the beloved Adam, may the peace of Allah always be upon him. The all-forgiving one turned his glory toward our original father and mother, watching their hearts in the purifying and healing stream of La ilaha illallah, fulfilling their longing to embrace mystic union and focusing his divine light and his divine word through them for the guidance of all future humanity. From the sacred brow of our Holy Mother Eve, the light of revelation descended through countless generations of prophets until the appearance of the second Supreme Mother of Humanity, confirmed in the glorious Quran as a channel of divine love to all human beings until the end of time. Our sublime spiritual mother, the beloved Mary, may the peace of Allah always be upon her. Mary, the illumined, courageously accepted the virgin birth of the Ruhula, the very spirit of Allah, the beloved Jesus. May divine peace embrace him and be transmitted through him to all his lovers throughout history. From Holy Mother Eve to Holy Mother Mary, who both received the full light of prophecy, the divine drama of revelation and mystic return unfolded progressively and was brought to the threshold of completion, a process enduring for untold thousands of years and intimately involving millions of tender, strong, loving, patient, insightful, and loyal mothers. The final threshold was crossed 500 years after the Virgin, when our most delicate and sublime mother, Amina the Blessed, may Allah always ennoble her countenance, received the, right, the white dove of the compassionately descending soul of the seal of prophecy. All beings, including the very planet, trembled in ecstasy, instinctively and intuitively recognizing the culmination of revelation, the closure of the circle from the pre-eternal Muhammad of light to the bearer of the wisdom of all prophets, the beloved Muhammad of Arabia. Then great mothers and guiding lights of the faithful began to appear, like full moons sailing to the earth, and living here with unimaginable feminine grace and power. This manifestation began with the first mother of the community of Islam, the first initiate to taste the intense sweetness of submission to Allah, transmitted through the Prophet of Allah, the first one of her people wise and courageous enough to witness the prophethood of the trustworthy one whom she loved and embraced as her husband, the precious Khadija, may Allah most glorious always confirm the queenly nobility of her soul. Among the incomparable wives of the prophet, each of whom is a mystic gem adorning the green turban of complete realization, the most precious Aisha shines forth as the crest jewel of spirituality, the one who demonstrates the perfection of womanhood to all humanity. May Allah eternally confirm her station at the right hand of the messenger. The mother and guide of the faithful transmitted the intimate and inconceivably powerful content of one-third of the Prophet's sublime oral tradition. As the beloved Muhammad, immersed in prayer and lost in the bliss of mystic union, would prostrate on his bed toward the Kaaba during the secret midnight hours. Our Holy Mother Aisha would move her legs to make room for his radiant head and then stretch out her legs again whenever her tender husband rose from his prostration to continue the sacred recitation of the resonance of Allah, the Book of Reality clothed in the letters of the Arabic alphabet. Finally, the manifestation of divine attributes through the feminine form of humanity reached its culmination in the one who does not fit into any books or words, the majestic Fatima, 
May the secret of her union with Allah and with the Prophet of Allah be revealed and replicated in all mature hearts. The noble messenger proclaimed unequivocally of the august Fatima. She is part of my prophecy. The sublime Ali, whirling lion of Allah, most mature among the spiritually mature, recognized our holy mother Fatima as the inward successor of the Prophet of Allah in the mystical lineage hidden within the secret heart of Islam. He therefore did not take hand with the first Khalifa, Abu Bakr the Truthful, until after six months of unimaginable yearning, the brilliant light of the soul of Fatima left this surface world to join the soul of her father in the garden of essence, where there is only one soul. Our most profound and humble greetings, salams, and kisses to the earth where the feet of those most holy mothers have walked. Beloved Eve, beloved Mary, most precious Khadija, most precious Aisha, and the pearl beyond price, the majestic and mysterious mother of the mirror of the prophet, the noble Hussein, may the peace of Allah always be upon him, the mother of the ecstatic lovers, supreme lover and beloved of the prophet, Fatima, the enlightened. The mothers of all humanity are reflected in these radiant mothers of the faithful. When asked who is the most important person for the soul, the noble prophet responded thrice with decisive intensity by repeating the sacred word, Mother. The holder of spiritual secrets reveals in his oral tradition the mysterious words, Paradise abides at the feet of the mothers. The holy tomb of Fatima, the true secret, contained in the house of the prophet that is embraced within the grand mosque in Medina, the illumined, surges with a flood of spiritual power, which inundates the earth with subtle blessings. This radiant energy of love, flowing from Fatima's fragrant resting place, is not separate in any way from the Baraka, the transforming holiness, streaming from the tomb of tombs, the refreshing palace of love's resurrection, the resting place of the beloved Muhammad. This oasis of love is also the destined resting place of the beloved Jesus after he returns and reigns over the entire globe. Here the two prophets of love and intimate spiritual brothers in divine love will manifest side by side on earth as they do now in the highest circle of love. O oh, mothers everywhere, throughout time and eternity, bearers of love, full moons of divine love, reflected through the precious feminine form, most important persons to the soul, keys and doors to paradise, foundation of paradise. Please listen, beloved sisters and wives, to the sweet music of the oral tradition. The messenger of Allah here discloses the tenderness of his own mother heart. When I stand for prayer, I intend to prolong it, but on bearing cries of children I cut it short, as I dislike to trouble the mothers. May the eyes of the heart of both men and women be open to the inspiring spiritual reality of motherhood, the startling spiritual implications of motherhood, the enlightening spiritual secrets of motherhood. The mystery of motherhood shines as Mecca, mother of holy places, radiates as the glorious Quran, mother of scriptures, and illumines the entire universe as Ummah, the spiritual community, mother of the lovers of truth. The mystery of motherhood sparkles secretly as the primary divine names Rahman and Rahim, which derive from the single Arabic root meaning womb. The mystery of motherhood glows delicately as the spiritual pregnancy of the heart of both men and women along the mystic way. This rich spiritual mystery manifests in a special sense through all women. O matrix of existence, O birth giver, educator, and protector of all the worlds, O glorious one. Amin, amin, alhamdulillahi, rabbi la alamin. Love. Dervish lovers on the way of love 
experience paradise through the transparent medium of earthly life. This is the highest teaching and our essential longing. Love, love, and only love. The abundant fruits of paradise are simply love. The rivers of paradise, clear water of awareness, pure milk of knowledge, strong wine of ecstasy, and clarified honey of mystic union are rivers only of love. The companions of paradise are companions of love. The perpetual springtime shade of paradise is the incomparable refreshment of love. The goblets of paradise are composed of the crystal of peaceful love and the silver of brilliantly flashing love in harmonious conjunction. The wisdom maidens of paradise are luminous pearls of perfect love, scattered in unimaginable profusion. Contemplating them, the soul is elevated to the realm of Allah's own delight. Conversation and communion among the people of love travels directly from heart of love and to heart of love. This profoundly clarifies the mystery of our earthly experience, which is a testing and teaching for the soul, and resolves with the power of divine love every twist of love or hesitation to love in the entire being of the lover. Paradise is the resurrection of the mundane body and mind as a radiant person, now composed entirely of divine love. Thus the dry wood of the limited conventional selfish body is transformed by the fire of love into the eternally flaming flower of the spiritual body. The healing and awakening resonance of the Holy Quran is the very sound of divine love. The wind of the Holy Spirit blowing through the fragrant trees of paradise, swinging their fruit-laden boughs in the graceful, dignified movements of the dervish circle of love, revolving in love to the sound hoo hoo hoo, essence of the essence, or hey hey hey, divine life overflowing as all lives in creation, all lives in creation. The banquet of paradise is the banquet of love at lavishly spread tables of love, that descend directly from the source of love. We are surrounded by the lovers of divine love, feeding each other the food of love with the tender intimacy of those who have disappeared completely into love. We gaze at each other intently with eyes of love that perceive only love. The circle of the highest companions of divine love floats as far above paradise as a constellation above the earth. One of the central stars in this constellation of love is the Sultan of Love, Pir Muhammad, Nuruddin Jarahi, may the disappearance into love and the reappearance in a body composed entirely of divine love, the supreme state of love, which he demonstrated on earth, be his throughout eternity. The pivotal star in this pulsing constellation of mystic love is the one who is all love, the lover of humanity, the uniquely beloved one of Allah, the Muhammad of love. Next to this incomparable prophetic soul of love shine the most brilliant stars, the notable Jesus and his holy mother Mary, whose child was conceived miraculously through the virgin birth of pure divine love. There among the highest companions shines the victorious Muzaffar Ashki, one who belongs only to love and is always intensely in love, along with other mystic poets and singers of love. Illumined by light from the radiant star, the sweet singer of Israel, the beloved prophet David. May peace be upon him as he perpetually sings psalms of love before the throne of love. The prophet of love, Muhammad the beloved, promises humanity by the permission and power of Allah, the most sublime among promises, you will be with the ones you love. So the dervish lovers of divine love, drunk with the wine of love, cry out constantly with love for these highest companions of love, longing only to shine with unspeakable love in that glorious parliament of love where the prophet of Allah, with his last precious earthly breath, prayed to be taken. As the soul approaches that core of love, the forms of paradise become increasingly transparent. The essential formlessness of divine love is revealed. The clear glass of the soul's lamp disappears from view as the flame of love burns brighter and brighter. The paradise expressed through earthly imagery implodes and disappears as the love of the lovers approaches the infinite intensity of divine love. 
Then all thresholds of manifest being are crossed over simultaneously, and the garden of essence shines alone as the essence of love. To the purest lovers, this earth is known as the garden of the perfect creation of Allah. Paradise is the secret garden of realization, hidden behind the garden of creation and discovered here and now by souls traversing the maze of swirling atoms and thoughts, holding on to the hems of the robes of the masters of love. The garden of essence is the secret of secrets, hidden behind the garden of paradise. From this essential bower, this beautifully blossoming cloister of pure love, the perfected soul can look out upon the garden of paradise and the garden of creation, moving easily between earth and paradise, as the fish of love swims from one bank to the other in the river of love. There is no division or separation. O oh, sweet freedom of swimming in the essential current! On one holy bank the earthly lovers of truth are meeting in the dervish tryst of love, and on the other holy bank the heavenly lovers, released entirely from the limits of earthly life, are exploring and contemplating the boundless realms of paradise. But in the middle of the streaming essence, at the hinge of the swinging door between time and eternity, at the center of the spinning wheel of earthly and heavenly manifestation, there is love alone, without form, without subject or object, bathing both worlds with its thirst, quenching life, giving a freshness. The here and the hereafter are love. Their single taste is love. As the enlightened prophet David sings, whether we plunge to the depth of the ocean or rise to the high point of all creation, we will encounter only divine love. The angels moving instantaneously from realm to subtle realm on wings of light are love, and the birds with instinctive praise opening their wings for flight are love. There are no boundaries between the many currents of love within the single ocean of love. Within the essence of love, however, there are no shores, even no currents, no ocean, no surface, and no depth. The two worlds, temporal and eternal, are beautiful silk scarves of love being offered openly in the bazaar of love. For a few gold coins of love for Allah, these scarves can adorn the beauty of the precious human form. But the essence of love is an immeasurable diamond, offered secretly by the few mystic sheikhs in the bazaar, hidden among booksellers and ice cream makers, unknown to the jewelers who are blinded by pride, of possession, by the idolatry, of collecting the precious stones of multiplicity. No amount of gold can confer ownership of this diamond of essence, for there are no owners, there are no buyers or sellers, there are no souls separate from it. Essence cannot adorn the human form as silken scarves can, for it is formless, and no form can exist beside it. Yet, from this facetless diamond alone shine forth the faceted realms that we call creation and paradise. To this essence, the holy prophet secretly alludes in his sublime oral tradition after entering the garden of essence, the human bearer of the essence of love, the beloved Muhammad, may he simply be divine love, came forth from prayer in a body of love and proclaimed to his companions of love, I was shown paradise and I wanted to take a bunch of fruit. Had I brought you this fruit, you would have eaten from it as long as the world remains. Surah Fatiha Each noble messenger is created by the mercy of Allah before eternity. As a sublime prophetic soul, and each comes forth called by the word of Allah at the precise moment in the divine drama of progressive revelation. The prophets are like harmonious notes in a vast symphony, yet 
These mystic tones have resounded and will resound throughout eternity, unlike linear notes that are stuck, sound briefly, and disappear again. This revelatory symphony of prophetic voices is the very word of Allah, which called forth the universe during six original days of power and which is now manifest as the music of the spheres, the melodious hum of the entire creation in constant praise of its creator, singing through the languages of all beings. The word of Allah, which called creation instantly into being with the divine cry, Be! will become the soaring trumpet blast that throws the entire universe into the stillness of trance on the final day. The supreme crescendo of the word will then awaken the entranced universe into the resurrection of love to live divine life alone with no created limits. What is the symphony? With 124,000 movements, each marked by the unique theme of a prophetic soul. What is this residence of Allah from which all worlds are coming forth and into which they are returning again like bubbles in a stream? What is this divine word that creates, sustains, and dissolves? What is this word that shines as healing and illuminating wisdom from the hearts of the prophets of Allah and those who love the prophets? This resonance, this word, this universal music of power and mercy is the transcendent Quran. The transcendent Quran is like the sun, millions of miles above the earth and yet intimately sustaining the entire ecology of the planet with its life-giving radiance. To meditate upon the notation of the Arabic Quran with ink on paper is like gazing at the solar disk in a clear sky. It is too bright to look at directly, but it can be seen as a whole. The transcendent Quran graciously appears as a finite book of several thousand verses, just as the unfathomable energetic depth of the sun appears as a small brilliant golden disk floating in the blue sky. Were we to come close to the radiant sun of the transcendent Quran, our modes of perception would be blinded and silenced by its dimensions and by its power. Were we to come closer than that, we simply would not survive as individual, personal beings. However, as Allah Most High keeps the earth, just close enough to the sun to create the most fruitful environment for diversity of life, so Allah most little keeps humanity at the right distance from the transcendent Quran, simultaneously veiling and revealing emanating divine light, which does not burn the tender shoots of faith, yet sustains vast ancient forests of mystical knowledge. Each holy prophet, may the peace of Allah be upon them all, is given a special sign from the source of power and love to demonstrate prophethood to his people. The confirmation of the signs of all prophets, the beloved Muhammad, brought forth in harmony the spiritual secrets of all previous messengers as the infinitely condensed form of the Arabic Quran, which is the reservoir of every drop of the torrential rain of revelation that has poured down upon the universe since the awakening to prophethood of the beloved Adam. All sacred books of humanity are contained, confirmed, and safeguarded in the embrace of the Arabic Quran. The immeasurable sun of divine power, the transcendent Quran, miraculously appears as a golden disk, as an illuminated Arabic manuscript that the lovers can kiss and rest their heads upon, shedding tears of love. The Arabic Quran is the unequivocal sign brought from Allah by the Prophet of Allah. No one can imagine the power of this sign, which will shine like the sun in the sky of human awareness until the end of time, for it is the culmination of the drama of revelation. Were the transcendent Quran to descend upon a great mountain, it would be like the sun descending to touch the green earth. The mountain would be blown away like a mote of dust. The entire planet would be vaporized. This is precisely what will happen on the final day when the transcendent Quran descends to earth. However, the flaming sun of the Quran, the full light of revelation, has already descended, not touching the earth or any perishable substance, but entering the diamond of the supreme prophetic soul. This golden Quranic sunlight radiated through Muhammad Mustafa, 
during 23 years as a mercifully veiled revelation, as a life-giving sun that now circles and sustains the entire globe of human spirituality. This incomprehensible event, the vast sun plunging from the sky and entering a human heart, occurred on the night of power in the cave of silence, on the mountain of exalted aspiration and yearning within the wilderness of willlessness. That most precious human form, praiseworthy and trustworthy, was almost crushed in the revelatory embrace of Allah's emissary of light until those most beautiful bearded lips began to transmit the music of the divine reality, ultimate reality. Our personal night of prayer, excuse me, our personal night of power, our own reception of the radiance and resonance of the glorious Quran comes every time we chant the opening surah, the ineffable Fatiha, disclosed by the sublime oral tradition to be equal in spiritual power to the entire Quran. Through this recitation, we mystically ascend through the boundless realms of revelation with seven steps of light, the seven sur verses of surah Fatiha, which are the seven heavens and the seven levels of the self reaching the seventh mystic plane and sealing the confirmation of all revelation with the ecstatic cry, Amin, we can no longer be aware of our individual existence, for this would be idolatry. The elevation of created multiplicity to the level of uncreated unity, crushed in the all-powerful embrace of Surah Fatiha, permeated with its mystery, sparkling with its secrets, flowing like a healing spring with its living water, we enter the original night of power experienced by the Holy Prophet, the implanter of the glorious Quran in the heart of humanity. May the infinite blessing of Surah Fatiha always be his. Contained miraculously in Surah Fatiha is this mystic night, which manifests outwardly only once a year, hidden by the mercy of Allah on the last ten nights of Ramadan and illuminating each of these nights with its healing awakening, shining embrace of blackness. Surah Fatiha is this night of power. Surah Fatiha is the entire living Quran, and hence it contains the history and future of the universe. Surah Fatiha is the universal way of Islam revealed to humanity since the prophet Adam, upon him be peace. Surah Fatiha is the purest remembrance of Allah, the supreme decur. Surah Fatiha is the merging of the dervish soul into the light of reality. Surah Fatiha is the medicine for the illness of self-centeredness. Surah Fatiha is the channel of divine mercy that flows into every heart. Surah Fatiha is the day of judgment, the end of time, and the resurrection of manifest being on the plane of ultimate reality, which is beyond being. Surah Fatiha is the master key carried by the Walis of Allah, hidden saints of the complete realization of unity and the pierce of the tarikas, fountains of mystical teaching, on the path to highest enlightenment. Surah Fatiha, so indescribably powerful, is sung sweetly and simply in every prayer. Surah Fatiha is the prayer of Islam, the foundational prayer of the human heart. Without opening the channel of Surah Fatiha, no person of prayer enjoys the complete connection with the ultimate source, the perfect communion with Allah, which is Islam. The living Fatiha, the Fatihu who walked upon this earth blessing it with his perfectly guided steps, the Holy Prophet states in his sublime oral tradition, which is the commentary of his life upon the inner secrets of Surah Fatiha, whoever does not recite Fatiha in his prayer, that prayer is incomplete. The supremely devoted Abu Huraira, perfect mirror of the oral tradition of the Son of Knowledge, proclaims, If you recite Fatiha only, it is sufficient. May our prayers and our very life breath be completed by Surah Fatiha. May our existence become the resuscitation of Fatiha only. Greetings, Holy Fatiha, Quranic diamond at the heart of the Prophet of Allah. Essential message in the heart of the essential messenger. Greetings, O flaming sun, that gives light and life, self-veiling and self-revealing. May Surah Fatiha and the perfect human embodiment of these seven oft-repeated verses intercede for us now 
as if it were the last moment of the universe. O Fatiha, show us the mystic resurrection. Awaken us to the essence of light through the seven levels of the self along your seven sacred steps. Lift us into your perpetual night of power and peace, the black light, the night of union with the beloved. Amin, amin, alhamdulillahi, rabbi la alamin. Thus concludes section 1012 of Adam from the Son of Knowledge by Lex Hickson Nur al-Jarahi. Next time we will pick up again in the middle of chapter 5, Islamic Meditations, when we read section 1013. I will see you then. Alam. <laughs>